actually just in case on another violation, well, let's get straight to our top story. It's day eight of Russia's invasion on Ukraine. According to Reuters, a Ukrainian delegation is now traveling by helicopter to meet Russian counterparts for the second round of talks, which will begin tonight. In the meantime, Russia's foreign minister has said today that Moscow is ready for talks to end the fighting in Ukraine, but with a condition. Um, he said that Russia will continue to press its effort to destroy Ukraine's military infrastructure. Now, the first round of uh, talks between Ukraine and Russia uh, took place in the border town of Gumel uh, on Monday in Belarus. That did not uh, reach any conclusion. It was inconclusive. Uh, the second round of talks happening between Ukraine and Russia today. Also, there are four major cities in Ukraine which are badly affected, starting off with Kherson, where uh, the mayor of Kherson has said that Russian troops have seized control of the port city. Uh, this is in southern Ukraine. Uh, the mayor has said Russian troops had forced their way into the city council building and imposed a curfew on residents. Now, several other cities, including the capital, Kiev, uh, continue to be attacked by Russian troops. As I said, uh, in Kiev, there are explosions that have been reported today. According to CNN, the sound of the blast could be heard across the city. According to the Ukrainian Interior Ministry, a major uh, heating pipeline in Kiev was damaged in the strike. And Ukrainian officials have said that at least five people have been killed after Russian forces fired at the main television uh, tower uh, in Kyiv and the city's main Holocaust memorial. Meanwhile, in Mariupol, the city council has said that Russian forces are constantly and deliberately uh, continuing to shell a vital civilian infrastructure in the southeastern Ukrainian port. The council said in a statement to that quote, they are breaking food supplies, setting us up in a blockade as in the old Democrat end. Now, while all of this is happening, there's a new address uh, that Ukrainian president has put out today. He said that the country will be rebuilt and said that Russia will learn about reparations. Mrs. Zelensky went on to say, and I quote, even if you destroy all our Ukrainian cathedrals and churches, you will not destroy our faith, our sincere belief in Ukraine and God, belief in people. We will rebuild every single house, every single street, every single city. And we're telling Russia, learn the words reparations and contributions. You will pay back fully to us for what you've done against our state, against our every single thing. Now, Russia's foreign minister has accused Western politicians of fixating on nuclear war one week after Moscow launched the invasion of Ukraine. Now, in an interview with Russian and foreign media, he said, and I quote, it is clear that World War III can only be a nuclear war. I would like to point out that it's in the heads of Western politicians that the idea of nuclear war is spinning constantly and not in the heads of Russians. Now, the International Criminal Court prosecutor has said that he will immediately proceed with an investigation into the alleged war crimes in Ukraine dating back to 2013. Now, the announcement comes a week after Russia launched an all-out attack on Ukraine. It's day eight, uh, drawing condemnation and sanctions from major world powers. Focusing now on India's Operation Ganga, a MEA spokesperson as of today has said that over 18,000 Indians have so far been evacuated from Ukraine. Uh, Mr. Arindam Bakshi has said, and I quote, we are closely following the developments in Kharkiv, Sumi, and other cities in eastern Ukraine, end quote. Now, the MEA has also said that a few hundreds might still be uh, stranded in Kharkiv despite the government's advice. The government has been saying uh, and asking uh, Indians to leave Kharkiv immediately. The center, meanwhile, has refuted claims of, of Russia that Indian students are being held hostage in Ukraine. Now, it's said that they were in constant touch with all nationals and haven't received any such report yet. And this comes after the, uh, a day after the Kremlin, uh, Kremlin claimed that Indian students in Kharkiv had been taken hostage by Ukrainian security forces who were using them as, and I quote, a human shield. 
The Supreme Court in the meantime today asked Attorney General K.K. Venugopal to look into a plea that some Indian students uh, trying to flee Ukraine were stuck on the Romanian border as they were being prevented from crossing over uh, and see if they can be helped. Now, Justice Ramana has told the AG that there are many students in Ukraine and, and I quote, some have come, please use your good offices. We will send a copy by special messenger to AG, see if you can do some help. Meanwhile, India has abstained in the UN General Assembly on a resolution deploring Russian aggression against Ukraine. Now, India reiterated that differences can only be resolved through dialogue and diplomacy, something that India has been saying for a while now. Uh, the resolution was passed with 141 votes in favor. Now, here's how the world is reacting. We start off today with Japan, which has now announced that it will freeze the assets of four additional Russian banks from April 2nd, taking that total number to seven. Now, the move will take effect on April 2nd. The banks were, uh, are already closely related to the Russian government. This is a report according to Reuters. Meanwhile, Russian State Space Agency has said that Russia has decided to stop supplying rocket engines to the U.S. in retaliation for its sanctions over Ukraine. Now, the space agency has said, and I quote, in a situation like this, we can't supply the United States with our world's best rocket engines. Let them fly on something else. They have broomsticks. I don't know what. Also, in the news amid this crisis, squad leaders are set to hold a virtual meeting today. Now, India, Australia, Japan, and the US are members of the Quad. The External Affairs Ministry has said, and I quote, they will exchange views and assessments about important developments in the Indo Pacific. Meanwhile, tech giants are also following suit in uh, imposing several restrictions, uh, starting off with IKEA, a Swedish furniture company, which has said that it has suspended Russia uh, and Belarus operations. And according to an AFP report, uh, this move would affect about 15,000 employees. Now, in a statement the company has said, and I quote, the war has had a huge human impact already. It is also resulting in serious disruptions to supply chain and trading conditions. For all of these reasons, IKEA has decided to temporarily pause operations in Russia. End quote. Now, majorly all US tech giants had imposed restrictions on Russian state media channels. However, non US companies like Ford, Volvo, Honda, etc., have also imposed restrictions. Moving away from this big story now to COVID roundup in India, the Ministry of Women and Child Development has dismissed a study by Lancet, which claims that 19 lakh children in India lost a parent or a caregiver to COVID. And the ministry has said that, and I quote, these findings have no correlation with ground reality in India. So far, 1.53 lakh children have been registered on the Bal Swaraj portal, including 1.42 lakh children with single parent, 492 abandoned children, and 10,000 odd children who have lost both their parents. End quote. Meanwhile, Goa Chief Minister has said uh, that the expert committee has advised resuming all the economic activities with 100% capacity in the state as COVID cases are declining. And this comes after Maharashtra announced that uh, it would be easing restrictions in 40 of its districts. Meanwhile, in New Zealand, uh, there has been an anti-vaccine protest that's been going on for over three weeks now. That was put to an end on Wednesday by the New Zealand police, um, which disrupted the capital for the last uh, three weeks. The anti-vaccine demonstrators in New Zealand's capital, Wellington, set several tents in a slide on Parliament's lawn on fire during violent skirmish with the police officers on Wednesday. There was shocking videos uh, that were circulated online as well. Clashes erupted after police officers with riot shields moved in to clear the ground. They pulled down tents and deployed a large forklift uh, to remove cars and camper vans to vehicle transporters. So far, the police have arrested over 60 people. 
In other news, right now, starting off with UP elections, uh, in the phase six of Uttar Pradesh elections, over 53% of voter turnout has been recorded as of 5 p.m. The polling took place uh, for 57 seats across 10 districts. There are total seven phases in the UP elections. Counting of votes will take place on the 10th. Meanwhile, there's an allegation that's come in from West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee, who alleged that she was attacked by BJP workers on her visit to Varanasi in Uttar Pradesh and said that such actions indicated their imminent defeat in the ongoing assembly elections. Now, describing the incident that took place, she said, and I quote, I was coming from the airport yesterday and going to the car. Midway, some BJP workers who have nothing in their brain except violence stopped my vehicle. They hit my car, pushed me, and told me to go back. On to business news right now. Oil prices continue to soar. It's reached $118 a barrel. This is the highest level since August 2013. Now, despite the price uh, increase, OPEC, or Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, and its allies, including Russia, have opted to maintain a 4 lakh barrel per day increase in output. Now on to environment news, this is a huge uh, news, big deal really, uh, because uh, 175 countries, including India, have signed a mandate to forge an international legally binding agreement by 2024 to end plastic pollution. Now the Global Plastics Treaty will tackle the whole life cycle of plastic. This is being touted as the most significant green deal since the 2015 Paris Climate on to sports news right now, the Bryan Brothers duo, Bob and Mike Bryan, have said that they will raise funds at this month's Indian Wells Tournament to support Elena Svitolina's drive to provide humanitarian aid to Ukrainian refugees. Now, this comes after Ukrainian tennis player Svitolina said that she would donate her prize money, and that video is really uh, trending on the internet, from the ongoing Monterrey uh, Open in Mexico to the Ukrainian. And one piece of good news before we wrap things up here on this bulletin, 29-year-old R. Priya of the DMK will be the first Dalit woman to hold the post of the mayor of Chennai. Now, the state government had passed an order in January this year, ahead of the recently concluded urban body polls in Tamil Nadu, reserving the post for a scheduled caste woman. She was also one of the youngest candidates in Chennai. That brings us to the end of this bulletin. Thank you so much for watching.